You guys, if you are like me and you're out fishing long enough, you will end up finding lures like this one right here. It's a rattle trap. I found this bad boy when I was in Georgia. And I got a hula popper here. This is just found fishing around my local lake. And I also found this jitterbug, or moreover, Samantha found the jitterbug for me. And anyway, I've got all these lures. They're looking a little worse for the wear. They're a little crusty, a little rusty. And yeah, the rest of this video, I'm gonna show you how you can bring those bad boys back to life using some vinegar, baking soda, and some elbow grease to get the job done. So we're just mixing together some baking soda and some good smelling palm olive dish soap followed by some pretty rancid smelling vinegar. But vinegar and baking soda effervesces and it's a really great natural cleaner. And when these guys are soaking in that for a while, it'll start to break down that built up rust and grime that has accumulated on the bodies of the lures. And after about 20 minutes of waiting, you should be good to go. And it's time to move on to the next step. Now you can skip this one if you don't want to or you're not confident enough in painting your own lures. Uh, but in this case, the wire brush could take off the top coat, which seals the lure. And if it is a wooden bait, they will eventually become waterlogged and the action will be completely messed up. So caution in doing this to your lures. If you do choose to skip this step, you should be able to just simply wash these off to get rid of the built up grime and dirt that's on the lure. But once you feel like you have scrubbed enough of the surface grime off, it is time to make sure that you take all the hardware off as well. Guys, snap swivels. Why are you using snap swivels to connect your lures to your line? Don't do it. It messes up the action. Learn good knots. It, it's not hard. It takes a little bit more time, but it's not hard. Here I'm just using some goof off to get rid of the extra top coat that's left on here as well as the paint scheme that was on the rattle trap because I am gonna go bare bones on that. Using some wire cutters to snip off the old treble hooks that were kind of rusted out on this bad boy and then I'm going to remove the additional hardware using a jeweler screwdriver. Get one of those too because they're great and you never know you, you can use them like just all the time. So the hula popper did come up with a little bit of a challenge for me. The silicone skirt that goes on the tail end here is gone and I'm not going to be able to replace it. So I'm going to use one treble hook on the belly and then add this another spot for a treble hook on the very tail end, which I'm going to use a dress treble, which is a feathered treble for a kind of like a skirt like treble hook at the end there. And then just going to sand the rest of the top coat off and make a nice even flat surface for when I go to paint the rattle trap. As always just starting off with a nice coat of white kind of like a primer to let everything sit on and then I'm going immediately with a mesh wrap around this thing for scale pattern because I want those uh, scales to be outlined in the white so Throwing on some yellow ochre, ochre, don't know how to say that word, and then just green. Real simple pattern here, leaving the belly white. Coming in with this darker kind of forest green. I don't remember the name of this one specifically. And 
this uh, mesh that you see I'm using here came from a thing of garlic and yeah just gonna finish this off with that green back on the face and the top I'm not gonna go into too many details here after all it is a rattle trap they're not super detailed for lipless crankbait here I'm gonna do a fin on the side using a stencil that I quickly made out of just a piece of paper and a razor blade the only downside is I placed this a little far back in my opinion I wish I would have put it a little bit further towards the head but it'll work and top it off with an eye and we're on to the next one as we did before we're doing again and on the next one as well is starting off with white this one I really wanted to make look like something I've never seen before in a lure which is an actual like June bug or beetle so I looked up a few photos of some beetles online and came up with this kind of my own creation of a beetle there was one that had a, a striped top side like this but its belly did not look like the belly I end up doing on here so that's just yellow ochre again I can't say that name yellow ochre ochre just black and white very simple but doing some hand painting there to get the details done right coming in with some wicked blue this stuff kind of has a, a, a fade, like a natural fade to it. So if you spray it real thin, it stays light. You spray it thicker, it kind of has like those shadowy effects, which was perfect for what I was going for on the underside of this beetle. like it, it's segmented like a like a normal looking beetle would be on to the last one here with the hula papa This one I'm using something called liquid frisket. It's a way of masking off what you don't want to have changed. In this case, I wanted some white stripes on it. Uh, didn't really mean to name drop a sweet band like the white stripes, but yeah, listen to the white stripes. They're awesome. The liquid frisket dries on there, and when you are ready, you just simply rub it off. Uh, I wanted to be careful though, that's why I'm using the popsicle stick, because I don't want to scrape away the black. In this case, the, the frisket kind of was being stubborn. As you can see, it's taking a little bit more than normal to get the stuff to come off, and that's because I put it on like a day before I decided to paint. So, usually it comes off pretty easily. Uh, and it works really well for the effect that I'm going for here, which is a loon color pattern. That's why I'm point painting this with a red eye. Dress this one up with a treble on the end here, a, a white treble to match the scheme. And we are done. There it is, the finished hula popper, and I did it in a loon style. Now, I will go and try to catch fish with these. However, I mean, I did not design them. I just painted them, so we do know the action works by design. It is a hula popper after all, and this is the jitterbug. I wanted to make it look like an actual beetle, so I looked up some fun beetle photos online. I, I'm really excited about that one. I think it looks cool. Whether or not it catches a fish, it might just be some wall art. And last but not least, the Bill Lewis rattle trap. And I just went with a natural look here. As you can see, I have it tied up, ready to go, because I'm most confident about this one at this time of year, because it still is 
early June in Minnesota. So we're talking spawn, pre-spawn still. So whether or not any of these will actually catch at this time, I am still uncertain. Probably not the best time to go out and use these lures, but I'll go throw this one around for a bit. Guys, thanks for watching Lake Monster Lures. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.